Well, let's have a look at the team lineups now, starting with the Newcastle Breakers. It's, uh, it's a pretty decent team as well. And they've got to break down Catlin, Price, McManus, Roberts and Shannon. That is the back four plus the goalkeeper. Can it be broken down? Well, only the next 90 minutes will tell. And Alan Hunter, uh, Sydney Olympic, uh, coming off that 5-0 win will be very, very confident indeed. Um, what do you think their chances are of repeating that dose today? Well, I don't think they've got a great chance of scoring five goals, I've got to be honest. But certainly with an unchanged lineup from last week, they will be a lot more settled. Chris Kalantis is the only change. He'll start on the bench. But certainly that defence has been very resolute over previous weeks. Mema Jurakovic, now that he's back after that earlier injury, is an absolute quality player to have back there. But Scott Thomas, as we know, has been the unsung hero. He is a quality player, and I'd say one of their best defensive players this season to date. But Pablo Cardozo is certainly the man to watch for. Well, give us a scoreline uh, with Pablo Cardozo in there. Well, I think Pablo Cardozo may have some effect. Whether he scores or not, I don't know. But I think... Olympic will get away with this, 2-1. Here we go, Alan Hunter, 2-1 to Sydney Olympic. What do you say at home? Well, we're all set down here for a great game. It's pretty breezy as we take you to your match commentator, Mike Cockrell. Thank you very much, Paul Wade. Well, it's been a long time since Newcastle Breakers have been in such a rich vein of form. Just two losses out of their last eight games going into this very important match against Sydney Olympic. A chance perhaps to push into the top half of the table. The man in the middle this evening, all the way from Melbourne is Jeremy Blaney. It's going to be Sydney Olympic in their away kit of all white up against the Newcastle Breakers in their blue and red. So all set here at the Birmingham Gardens. The sun setting to the west as the game is about to get underway. Sydney Olympic, well, they had that 5-0 local derby win over Marconi Fairfield last weekend. But Branko Cellina, their coach, reserving judgment. He says this is a big psychological test for his team. They've won just once away from home this season, Sydney Olympic, and that was way back in round one against the Northern Spirit. So a lot to prove for Olympic, despite their pedigree and despite the morale boost I'm sure they received with that very, very convincing victory over Mokoni last weekend. Blagojevic in midfield tonight for Olympic. Goes long, the flag stays down but there is a push according to the referee on Shane Price who is playing in the heart of that Newcastle Breakers defence Servinsky and Cardozo up front for Sydney Olympic Brett Emerton in behind them across the middle Chalina and Blagojevic and Scott Thomas while well, we talked to him before the game a local boy a Nova Castrian born and bred left the Breakers two seasons ago had a spell with Adelaide City now with Olympic a lot of friends in town here for Scott Thomas, but that won't count for anything over the next 90 minutes. It's all about the business at hand, and that's to get the three points for Olympic. It's a heavy pitch as well. There's been rain every morning this week up here in the Hunter Valley, and this near touchline in particular, very, very heavy underfoot. Newcastle officials talking about calling the game off if there had been more rain today. Thankfully, that hasn't happened. But what I can tell you is that Lee Sterry, the coach, has asked the groundsman to push the sidelines in by a couple of metres, try and confine the Sydney Olympic team. Interesting tactic, that one, Paul Wade. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, it's good, though, that Lee Sterry's thinking about these sorts of things. I mean, they're a quality side, Sydney Olympic. They're uh, red-hot form, and any way you can find, even if it's a metre either side of the ground, to stop them slow them down a little bit because there's not that much room anymore then you've got to take it Lee Sterry congratulations so a very slow start to this match both teams showing plenty of respect for each other the break is in possession Lee Sterry tonight opting to leave his Korean striker Yun Song Chul on the bench he's given a start to young Greg, Greg Owens He's just given away the ball there as we speak. Yes, Greg Owens. Well, how could we forget his contribution against the Perth Glory earlier this season? Two goals on his debut. We were here that night, Paul Way. What a start to your career. <laughs> In the most spectacular fashion I've seen for a long, long time. They'd, uh, they'd make, make the, the all-time classics for that season for sure. He's been nursed along since Greg Owens has been kept in the youth team and on the bench. Has had to fight hard to win a spot in this starting lineup. Gets his opportunity tonight. Playing in central midfield. Here is Chilina. 
Emerton outside of him. Tolina goes short towards Cardozo. In quickly was Andy Roberts. Olympic with possession. Tolina with a good ball down the line. That should sit up nicely for Cardozo. It does. Looking for the corner. Still going is Cardozo. Chance for Tolina and the big meaty palm of Bobby Catlin, the goalkeeper. Just palmed that away. Very casual work indeed from Catlin. But that shot was going in from Tolina. So the first corner goes to the visiting team. As we look at the replay, in it comes from Brennan. Missed there by Bailey. Bailey again down the line. Looking for the cross and the ball, according to the assistant, had drifted over that goal line. We just saw a couple of incidents there. Alan Hunter of how this ball is just going to really sit dead once it hits the turf. Very heavy underfoot. Well, it is very heavy underfoot. And just in front of you guys on the western stand there, it is very, very heavy indeed. Much heavier as the ball comes over towards me on the other side. But I can assure you that it is a case of Olympic having to get wide. Branko Kalina obviously agreed with what you suggested. It was a good move by Lee Sterry to bring the pitch in. But he's already demanding his players like Savinsky and his son there on the ball now to get wide when they can. Castle with possession. Player there is Brad Wetcherick. Left sided player. That's good engines. Brad Wetcherick recruited from the local league, Hamilton Olympic, I think it was, during the off season. Lee Sterry doing a great job, really. Not too many big names in this Newcastle side, but they're very well organised, a lot of spirit. Savinsky. Wetterek sliding in bravely, but really no one up front at the moment for Newcastle. Only Bonavoglia officially is going to play in the forward line, but even he is dropping deep, so Newcastle swamping the midfield. McManus now looks up. That's going to be a problem, though, Paul Wade, because you saw there with McManus receiving the ball on the edge of his own area, no one to aim at, and they're just going to keep turning over possession. Yeah, indeed. Um... I mean, Lee Sterry's been saying you're up against the quality side in Sydney Olympics, so what am I going to do? Am I going to uh, show my cards too early and that get picked off? And then wonder, I wonder if uh, I'd have done such and such? No, I'm going to go out there with the intention of not losing this game. And if I draw it, well, it's a bonus. Any bonus that you can take at this stage of the season against an informed Sydney Olympic is a good one. Brennan with a long ball. It's a good one. Almost found its way through to Emerton. Roberts brings it down. Emerton... Putting him under pressure. Now Wetrick, not the best of first touches. He's given it away. Emerton now wants to go outside. Price shouldered off the ball there by the Newcastle captain. And that will be a free kick to Sydney Olympic. Clear nudge there from Price. Pushing Emerton to the ground. Olympic have brought the tall players like Urich forward. Savinsky also an obvious target. It'll be the in-swinger from Brennan going deep. Away by Wetrick, helped on there by Mark Wilson, but no one once again on the halfway line for Newcastle. Durakovic looks down the line towards Savinsky. It'll break for Cardozo. And Roberts wants to shepherd that over the line, but Juric is putting him under a wee bit of pressure there. So Branko Cholina obviously has worked out Newcastle's tactics right from the start. They're fairly transparent, you have to say. They just want to take the sting out of the Sydney Olympic team in the early stages. Well, they're also very keen, sorry, Paul, to get those players wide. He's demanding again, Paul, to get those players wide, start on the touchline, and if you have to come in, come in. I mean, basically, it's a great tactic, and Lee Sterry's obviously learned a lot as well as that tactic from Zoran Manage. Here's Jelena getting wide, served by Savinsky. The ball in towards Emerton. And Todd McManus had to move quickly there to clear the danger. So it's all Sydney Olympic in these opening stages. Newcastle prepared to concede a lot of territory to the visitors. No real shots on target as yet, although Catlin was required to make a save from Jelena early on. Here comes the corner. Away by Shannon. Only as far as Brennan. Cardozo is on side. Foot came in from Wilson. Price up the line. Well, 
I don't think Newcastle have got into the attacking third of the field and we're eight minutes into the match. Bailey all the way back to Durakovic. Olympic still without their captain tonight, Peter Tsikenis, who's been laid low by a chest infection. So he's not in the squad, although he is at the ground to watch the team play. Palancis on the bench alongside Norman Tomei. Two players more used to starting than not. Franco Cellino, very happy with the contribution of Adrian Savinsky last week. He scored the opening goal against Marconi. And maybe that combination between Savinsky and Cardozo, two different types of players, is the answer. Because Tomei and Cardozo, many people would argue, play the same way. Yeah, I, I don't think Branko Kalina is totally happy with uh, Savinsky's fitness at the moment. But he thinks, well, the only way I'm going to get him fit is to actually play him in these games. Better stuff from Newcastle. Wilson looks for the cross. It almost turns into a shot. Right on his line, George Bahutsis gets his first touch of the leather. Ten minutes in. It's a fairly clear signal of the way this opening stage has gone. Robbie Shannon, the Scotsman. The team star import playing on that right side. Here's Bonavoglia now, but it's one against four. Down he goes. And eventually he gets the whistle from Jeremy Blaney. Savinsky, I think it was, who touched him on the way through. Don't know how much contact was really in that. Not a lot by the look of things. No. They have the free kick, Newcastle. Price wants to take it early. And Shane Price there is going to be cautioned because the referee says, I hadn't blown the whistle. And secondly, the free kick was to be taken a few more metres further back up the park. So a little bit of exasperation there for Shane Price. First player to be cautioned. Shannon over the ball for Newcastle. Five in the wall for Sydney Levick. There's no way in the world that wall is back to required distance. No way in the world. Well, what Shane Price was trying to do there as well was milk a yellow card from the Olympic players. In it comes from Shannon. Easy meet in the end for Bahutsis. Well, let's have a little talk about that one, Paul Way, because it's a static situation. It's right in front of the referee. That wall was about six metres, if you're lucky. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, referees... In the old days, if you were, if you excuse the term, used to actually step the 10 metres out if they were a little bit unsure. But, yeah, uh, 10 metres with a six-year-old, maybe, but uh, certainly not the uh, required distance from the ball that FIFA require. Yeah, it was a good, a good point there, Paul, because I think the referee erred there. I believe he should have paced the 10 metres, got the 10 metres, and Price had every opportunity there to do what he did. And I think it was very harsh to book him. He was trying to tell the referee that the wall should be 10 metres. And certainly, they didn't listen, the players in the wall. Well, I know none other authority than Pelé has been saying for a number of years now that we should dispose of the wall at free kicks because it concedes too much of the advantage for the attacking side. I have to say I agree with him as we stay with the play. Now, Bonavoglia, wide is Shannon. He was too slow, though. And in cover for Sydney Olympic was Scotty Thomas. Well, I think what Pelé suggested was to do away with the walls inside the penalty box, and I think that is a very good idea, Mike. Good work from Bonavoglia. Durakovic, very cool, under pressure indeed, Mehmet Durakovic. He has a target up front, and it is Cardozo. Blagojevic looking for Thomas. Back there is McManus. Bobby Catlin, the Newcastle goalkeeper. He might say was actually voted Sydney Olympics player of the season last year. But despite that, he was released by Branko Cellina. And is now here at Newcastle where he has some family ties. What a servant to the game Big Bobby Catlin has been. He's been around for a long, long time. 273 games. 15 seasons now in the Ericsson Cup. Still one of the best number ones going around. And he has a distinction as well of scoring a goal at this level. Bobby Catlin. He came from one of those long kicks upfield that he's made a specialty over the years. Is that, is that exactly how he scored it, from a long kick? I thought maybe a penalty, but... Uh, oh, that's... Away by the breakers. 
They're not really getting much change going forward. Good crowd in here at the Breakers Stadium. And the home team will need to give them a bit more to get them warmed up. See what they can do here. Not the best of passes, though, from Wilson, I think it was. The Olympic have it back. Brennan wants to get things going in a hurry. Can't do so. Comes Wetrick. One of Ogley with the layoff. Theatrical dive there from Richie. The referee has waved play on. One of Oglia, watched by Bailey. Chalin is across there as well. Richie goes into the feet of Greg Owens, but again, Newcastle outnumbered. And Olympic trying to break through Emerton. Rakovic taking his time. Looks to the left. The idea was to find Thomas, but Thomas checked the run, much to Mehmet Durakovic's frustration. Lee Sterry, well, you'd suggest he's not too thrilled by the look of that. Maybe he's asked his team to sit back, but maybe not this deep. Well, what he's actually saying there, guys, is that he's been telling them about keeping the shape at the back. He's been doing it for six months, was his exact words, and he wants that shape sorted out straight away. But interesting how they try and get that wide ball now, Olympic. But look at the difference with the width of the park ball. They just can't seem to get it to feet there from Mehmet Durakovic. Wetrek. Owens, he tries his luck, forces the save. Signs of life at last from Newcastle. And it's come from the youngster, Greg Owens. They should know all about him after those two goals early in the season against the glory. But they gave him too much latitude there. Bailey looks down the line. Emerton is the furthest forward. Goes inside instead. Newcastle again inviting Sydney Olympic into their half of the field. A header on by Savinsky. And Bonavoglia against Durakovic. The bounce favours the Sydney Olympic man who does well to get the contact. McManus pumping it forward. And Mark Wilson can't keep it under control. Well, that almost worked there for Newcastle. One of Oglia isolating Mehmet Durakovic. That is certainly the plan of Lee Sterry. One of Oglia very, very quick indeed. Mehmet not in the same league in terms of speed. And if they can get a few bounces to break for them like that, Newcastle, maybe they will get some change out of these tactics. Yeah, Mike, it only needs to happen once and uh, and you've got 1-0 on your, on your hands. It's dangerous. Well, they've already had, sorry, Mike, they've already had the best chance of the game. And it's a good point you make, Paul. They've just got to work on that break, be persistent, and they've just improved so much, Newcastle, and they certainly do look a very committed side at this stage. Chalina with the cross, easily dealt with by Roberts. Six blue shirts now on the edge of this area. Newcastle absorbing pressure. Owens skips past Thomas. Shannon now looks through the middle, gets a run finally from Haythorn Thwaite. Not the best of layoffs though from Haythorn Thwaite. And offside is Adrian Savinsky. And there's the organisation we spoke about earlier, Paul. The Newcastle defence. That's what Lee Sterry wants. They've got to step up when they can, keep the shape, and rotate to pick up those Sydney Olympic strikers, and they've done it so very well so far. Yeah, but I just wonder, Alan Hunter, if they can do it for 90 minutes. It's a dangerous game they're playing. It is. It's a very difficult one. But certainly they fancy themselves on the counter-attack, and they also fancy themselves Newcastle if they get those set moves that they had earlier. I think they fancy themselves in the air to try and dink something in there. They, they believe, speaking to Lee Sterry, that... The real danger man, or the only danger man, is that man on the ball now, Durich. So they, they really believe that they can get something as an aerial advantage if they get a, get a lot more set moves. Brennan. Down to the left is Thomas. Cardozo flicking it over his head, but McManus in there swiftly. Good skill there from Durakovic to bring it down. Blagojevic, haven't seen a lot of him as yet. Milan Blagojevic. 
the playmaker of this Sydney Olympic team, has great skills, great vision as well. And it'll be his job to prise open this very sturdy Newcastle defence. Try and service the front runners like Cardozo and Savinsky. Chris Galantis. Oh, that's a big name to have on your bench. Former Socceroo. Been around a long, long time. The only club he's played for in this country is Sydney Olympic, but had 10 years in Greece with the two biggest clubs, Olympiakos and Panathinaikos. Coming back from a slight knock, not able to get a starting berth in this Sydney Olympic side. Side which really is blessed with so many quality players. Olympic going into this match in seventh place. But a win tonight would push them right up to fourth on the Ericsson Cup table overnight. So they've got plenty of incentive to do well, the visitors. Emerton. Straight in the back of the number seven, Peter Ritchie. And speaking about Chris Colansis, Wadey, I think he is the ideal guy to come on. If this, this scoreline remains at nil all, which will suit Newcastle, he is the sort of guy, along with probably only Emerton, that will run at players. And when they've got so many defenders there to crack down, I think Colantis is the ideal man on his day. Hathorn Thwaite looking for Wetcherek. Bailey is back for Olympic, but the back pass has dropped a little bit short. And Wetcherek, following through, almost found himself with an opportunity there. Scotty Bailey's back pass just fell short for Bahutis, who had to really hurry. He's done well there, the goalkeeper. And the breakers now looking to make something happen in this final third one of ugly with the back heel Wetcherick comes inside back to roberts now they have some numbers forward the breakers that's a long ball from roberts though too far behind wilson who's done well to retrieve it shannon wilson trying to play the wall pass it's come off adrian savinsky who is all the way back in his own area One of Oglia. Shoved to the ground there. Johnny Bonavoglia. Who makes the trek up from Sydney for training three or four times a week. Involved in a family restaurant in the Leichhardt district. Johnny Bonavoglia. Did in fact begin his Ericsson Cup career with Olympic. As the free kick comes in, that has been awarded a corner by Jeremy Blaney. Hathorn Thwaite was attacking the ball at the back post. And they look quite dangerous there, Wadey, didn't they? They look like they're organised for those set moves, Newcastle. You'd suggest that they'd probably practice those quite a bit this week, at least, Terry. Shannon with the corner goes deep to Wetcherek. Long now towards the man at the back post, who was Price. And Bahutis in the end did well under some pressure that was a rehearsed corner from the breakers good variation 20 minutes gone though no score line here no score i should say here at birmingham gardens olympic having the better of the game territorially but newcastle well they seem to be absorbing the pressure roberts away for a corner under pressure from emerton lee sterry in his first season as a senior coach in the Ericsson Cup, does have a wonderful record at youth league level with Sydney United and Marconi Fairfield. Has certainly served his apprenticeship. And it comes towards Blagojevic. Chalina might fancy himself from here, but he couldn't get the shot the way he wanted it to, Jason Chalina. And that will be a relieving goal kick for the breakers. Yeah, right. so it's a fair point you make, Alan. I, we've, we said before the game that if they were going to counter-attack, they'd have to rely a lot on set pieces. They are gold dust. And in the two or three that they've had so far, they have looked dangerous. No, they haven't got anybody on the end of it. But uh, that little bit more encouragement, it might happen. One of Ogliog has capitalised on a mistake from Durakovic. Did he foul them at the second attempt? The crowd suggests he did, but Mehmet Durakovic... A little bit flustered there. 
the ball just sat for him as he tried to play it back and there was certainly some use of the arms there for Wade. Yeah, there's certainly I know he's was. a mate of yours but yeah. uh, lucky to get away with that yeah, one. Indeed he was and I think it's got something to do with the surface. Um, remember Jurakovic is a, a great player when he's coming forward he can open up defenses but when he has to start changing the ball from one direction to another in a confined space then you've got him that's when you put the pressure on because he'll crack and that's exactly what happened right there well yeah. i don't know if it was a free kick but it certainly does cause problems doesn't it and bonavoglia has always been a problem when it comes to his pace and i think that they will try and utilize him as they are now but can he last the distance because he's got a lot of running to do good ball from Buena Voglia out comes Bohutsos because Wilson was closing in much better stuff this from Newcastle in the last five minutes or so maybe a few choice words from the bench has done the trick free kick now to Olympic given away by Wilson recalled to the side this evening, Mark Wilson, an injury to Glenn Sprod, who's damaged some ankle ligaments in the match in Perth last week. That's opened up the opportunity for Wilson. The breakers, of course, going across to the Perth Oval and scoring a 1-0 victory over the glory, much to the frustration of the home crowd. That's the double over Perth glory for Newcastle. They do have an amazing record against Perth in the last couple of seasons. Brennan with a shot. Well and truly sliced off the left boot there by Mark Brennan. And Wadey, at this early stage, you'd have to say that it's possibly going to be an unfortunate mistake by someone or an absolute cracker of a goal that could win this game because it certainly is deadlocked and doesn't look like it'll change the, the way, the pattern of the way both teams are playing. Here's Richie. Owens can't get past the challenge of Durakovic. Now with Wilson. Wilson faced by two. Can't get past the first man. That's Thomas. Cardozo now for Olympic. The ball over the top there looking for Savinsky. McManus will get there first. Now with Durakovic over the halfway line. Into the feet of Savinsky, but that was telegraphed. Roberts got in there. He's given it away. Now with Chalina. Has to turn Jason Chalina. Roberts has recovered well. And now this is problems for Chalina because Roberts is not a hard, easy, I should say, to beat from there. He's had to hand it off to Emerton. Good cross in looking for Savinsky. Didn't know much about it. There was a slight touch from Shannon there to put off to Adrian Savinsky. What an important touch it was too. Yeah, it was a, there was a couple of decent crosses. Pablo uh, Cardozo, though, was the only man in the middle. Now, if Sydney Olympic are looking at getting this ball wide and getting crossed in the middle, they've got to get the two central strikers in there, plus one of the midfielders, somebody like Kalina or Emerton, who hovers around that area. Durakovic with a long ball. On the turn was Savinsky, not too far away. Well, Adrian Savinsky really did well there because it was a difficult ball to deal with. He's had to turn very sharply indeed, the half volley as well, and that was only a few inches away. Well, it's a good point you made there, Wadey. I think they've got to get those numbers in the box, but I think in that case earlier with Chalina, they've got to get the crosses in as quickly as they can because Newcastle will just get there in numbers and cause all sorts of problems for Olympic if they don't. One of Oglia. Over the head of Durakovic. That is developing into an interesting battle indeed. McManus. Wilson. Again, Scotty Thomas doing good defensive work for Olympic. Catlin, not the best of clearances. Emerton. Going the wrong way though, Brett Emerton. Brennan pushing himself into midfield and Thomas in the end is outnumbered on that far side well if Lee Sterry's not too happy either is Branko Chalina 
Well, I think it's just Lucky a we case. Don't have him wide for audio, I think. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Mike. It's just a case of frustration with Bronco because he's demanding his players to come wide all the time. But the problem for me just stems, Paul, that they've got to get the crosses in early. They're just taking too long to set it up for the strikers. Yeah, people like Kalina out here on this right-hand right side who just happens to have changed with Brett Emerton. Every now and again, he'll swap over, but there's really nothing coming from it. Wetterek winning the 50-50 against Emerton. Here's Richie. Roberts. Newcastle forced back. Owens is now through the middle for Newcastle. Greg Owens took a little bit of a knock a few minutes ago. Trying to run it off. Given away now by Wilson. Good pressure from Brennan. Here comes Cardozo. Top goal scorer in the league is Pablo Cardozo. Well, I just put the mocker on him because that's probably one of the worst shots he's had all season. Yeah, it's a, it's a horrible surface to play on at times. It, it really does. It doesn't roll anymore. It bobbles all over the place. We saw it last week when Wollongong were playing South Melbourne. Similar grass where it's, uh, it's beautiful if you fall down, but I tell you what, if you're trying to play inch-perfect passes, uh, you better say a prayer or two. Well, it's all part of the game, isn't it, Paul? And certainly Lee Sterry, you'd have to say, great tactics. He's, he's brought the, the width of the pitch in, and he's certainly left the grass nice and long, and, and certainly the rain would have helped them as well. Here come the breakers on the counter. Wetcherek on this near touchline. Has to get past Bailey. Does get the ball in. Appeals for handball there, particularly from the crowd behind that goal. The referee probably caught on the wrong side there. Down goes McManus under the challenge of Scotty Thomas, and that will be a Sydney Olympic free kick. Let's have a look at that earlier incident as we see the ball come in here from Wetrick. Well, it was Chalina, I think, who thrust himself towards the ball. Can't tell for sure whether it came off the shoulder or the arm. He gets the benefit of the doubt. The breakers with the free kick. One of Oglia in the middle. Price has gone for McManus as well. They need some height in the air, the breakers. And Bahutsis, the very clean take indeed. He's done well, George Bahutsis, since coming into the side. Tim Curtis was the first choice at the start of the season. George Bahutsis has won his spot and kept it with a series of very solid performances. Half an hour gone, still a blank scoreline. Maybe Sydney Olympic starting to become a little bit frustrated. Yeah, I think they are. Uh, if you have a look at uh, all the games they've played, they thrive on possession. They've got to keep that ball, and get up to 60% of the ball, but they're not doing anything with it at the moment. It's a very tough unit to break down. They're not getting themselves wide. Well, they have come down this right-hand side a couple of times, but Thomas hasn't gone down the left-hand side. They need another outlet. They've tried a couple from long distance. They haven't, a wor haven't worked with Pablo Cardozo having a go. So they've got to rethink. Good touch on there from Haythorn Thwaite. On of Oglia, shielding the ball well. Too tight there, though, for Newcastle. Blagojevic has it back for Olympic. Well, the frustration must be set, setting in already because Branko Tolina has asked Chris Galantis to warm up. So possibly he was listening to what I was saying earlier. Who knows? Great tackle that from Brennan. He's won the throw as well. Chris Galantis stretching the hamstrings. The other two subs also down in that far corner. Elias Orgerinos and Norman Tomei. The home crowd now starting to make some noise. Didn't have much to cheer about in the first 20 minutes or so. But you just detect a few signs that the Newcastle side are starting to come into this match. Well, it's funny, uh, I was stopped by a couple of uh, Breakers fans and they said, Wadey, it's not the prettiest of football, but it's effective. And you can, uh, can't argue with that, a team that's now the last eight, they've only lost two. Over the top from Urich. Catlin has to come out of his area and somehow or other he's found Owens on that far side. Bobby Catlin was a fringe member of the Socceroos squad for one brief moment. Had a spell in England with Notts County and Birmingham City. A little bit disappointed that 
Socceroo representation didn't come his way. Well, Bob Catlin's a vital cog for this Newcastle defence, not just because of his ability in goals, but because he speaks a lot, he organises well, and he's got a lot of experience. And certainly Lee Sterry's looked to him to be that experienced man there all year. Catlin has to come out there to protect the ball with Savinsky looking for the crumbs. Bobby Catlin now 35 years of age. At 34 years of age, he'll uh, pull me up if I get it wrong. From the north shore of Sydney. Had hoped to get a gig with the Northern Spirit this season after spending most of his Ericsson Cup career at Marconi Fairfield before crossing to Sydney Olympic. But Graham Arnold, the spirit player coach, decided to go with youth instead. We can't criticise him for that, of course. Paul Henderson has been a revelation. So Bobby Catlin had to come up the motorway to Newcastle. And has made the spot his own, although he has a very talented understudy in Brad Swancott. So he can't afford too many bad games, Bobby Catlin, because he has a good quality keeper breathing down his neck. Here's Emerton. Deep cross, out comes Catlin. Well, that's probably an example of Bobby Catlin's benefits because Adrian Savinsky is a fairly tough customer, but when Bobby Catlin decides he's going to come out, not too many players, no matter how big, <laughs> want to contest the ball with him. In agreed. He is a big boy, Adrian Savinsky, and he wasn't willing to have a go at that 50-50. Well, he's a bit bigger than Branko Kalina would like at the moment too, let's not forget Paul. And I think certainly there is a good option there with Savinsky, but I, I just doubt his fitness. I don't, I don't actually agree that the only way to get him fit is by playing him in the game, and I wouldn't be surprised if Kalantis or Tomei come on even before halftime. Peter Ritchie losing out to Blagojevic. Wetcherek getting the slightest of touches and Bonavoglia is in the gap. The crowd comes alive. Bonavoglia into the box, wants to take on Durakovic, needs support. Gets it here from Owens. The ball doesn't sit for him. But they still have possession of the breakers. Here's Haythorn Thwaite. Price, the captain, has come forward. Wilson down the line but he's done well in fact Wilson to get inside Bailey still going is Mark Wilson and in the end Brennan came to the rescue well Wilson went past Bailey there almost as if he wasn't there in it comes from Shane Price but that's not one of his better efforts well I gotta agree with you mate outside the ground weighty because I like the way Newcastle are playing and they're right in this game it may not be attractive at times, but they know exactly what the game plan is and they're sticking to it. And it's Olympic now for me that have got to adjust to that and try and counter it. There's Peter Tsikenis, the absent Sydney Olympic captain in terms of playing. He's got a chest infection. As I've given it away, here's a chance for Owens. What a disappointing finish there from the youngster. That was a golden opportunity. Probably the best he's had in the game. Durakovic is down in the meantime, injured as he slid in there. Mehmet Durakovic didn't have the sting on the shot, though, did it from Greg Owens. And Durakovic will require treatment. He's had a tough start to this game, Mehmet Durakovic. This heavy pitch certainly won't be to his liking. I'll tell you what, Tits, uh, we talk about Newcastle and how much they've got to concentrate in defence, and we're talking about them defending for 90 minutes. And when you look at it, uh, it's Sydney Olympic who have got to concentrate because they do have the lion's share of possession but it's all the what happens when you've got the lion's share of possession is you start to lose concentration a bit you start to wander you, your passes start to stray because you do have the ball all the time and that's exactly what's happened in the last five minutes twice Sydney Olympic have nearly been caught and two other things I've noticed along with Djurakovic is the fact that Savinsky is limping as well he's already gone for a drink and he feels that he should be getting the ball more often. So possibly struggling a little at this stage, Paul. Durakovic there with a problem with the right hamstring as he stretched for the tackle. Wants to run it off. Mehmet Durakovic. Well, you have to hit him with a lump of 4v2 to get him off the park. He is such a tough customer, Mehmet Durakovic. What a wonderful, wonderful servant he has been for Australian soccer. Still has plenty to offer as well. 
in the years to come. Shoulder to shoulder there between Thomas and Wilson. It breaks for Newcastle. Owens. Well, one of Ogley is quick, but he's not that quick. Well, Limbig have got all three substitutes warming up now. And Branko Tolina just looks at his watch to my right here. So obviously if they don't come on soon, they will be warm and prepared to come on at some stage in the second half. But tactically, I believe they've got to have to do something if, if they are looking for the three points, Wadey. Well, Branko Cholina's watch will tell him there's seven minutes of normal time remaining in this half. Newcastle will certainly be satisfied with a level scoreline going into the interval. They started off slowly, Newcastle, but they're starting to show a little more adventure in the last 10 or 15 minutes. Sydney Olympic really becoming more and more frustrated with this situation. Bonavoglia starting to get possession, wants to run at these Olympic defenders. McManus, Shannon. Strong challenge from Thomas. A second challenge from Thomas was equally strong. And a third one as well. well. That's three in a row from Thomas. The free kick's been quickly taken by Shannon. Scotty Thomas, the Newcastle boy, born and bred, but no favours. Asked or none given. During the course of this match. Shannon into Wetcherek. Blagojevic with the slightest of touches up the park by Bohutsos. It will break nicely for Emerton. Savinsky's in space. That's where the ball should go. Here he is now with possession, Adrian Savinsky. And Emerton has continued his run. The cross comes off McManus. It will break for Savinsky once again. Emerton lines up the shot, but it's a disappointing finish from Brett Emerton. Chalina claims he was open. And it broke down there in the final third for Olympic. The story really of the match so far. Yeah, I mean, Brett Emerton on your screen right there. I mean, I remember one thing that uh, several, uh, Craig Johnson, I think it was, said to the cameras one day that he's not seen an Australian player with so many options for crossing the ball, whether it be near post, like a rocket, or floated to the far post, drilled across the six yard box. But at the moment, it just does not seem to be happening to Brett Emerton, he's lost that that ability to get that dangerous ball into that dangerous area right on the edge of the six yard box. Mind you, even if he had, there was nobody there. It was only Pablo Cardozo on that occasion. Yeah, it's a good point, Paul. They just don't seem to be getting the numbers in there. And as much as Newcastle started slowly, Bonavoglia is now getting a lot more support from his midfielders. And they're just starting to get on top of Olympic at some stage of this game. Bogovic comes inside, Haythorn Thwaite, Chalina has dropped out of the game in the last minute a few minutes i should say jason chalina i need him more involved bailey whips it in chalina gets the touch now with owens five minutes left until half time nil all here at the breakers stadium blagojevic Well, this sticky surface is really interrupting the flow of Sydney Olympic. No doubt about that. That's exactly what Lee Terry had hoped for. All really rolling very slowly indeed. Cardozo goes for the aerial approach. No one there for Olympic. Well, the ball's rolling slowly for both teams, Wadey, but I just think Newcastle are handling it better. They're knocking the ball earlier. They're playing one and two touch a lot more frequently, and they're causing problems because of that factor. Olympic are being swamped, firstly because they're waiting too long to get the crosses in, and secondly because Newcastle are just a little bit more hungry for the ball. Broken down there for Richie. Cardoza has it back. Here comes the counter. Chalina is screaming for it on that far side. He's got it. Good layoff. Thomas into the area. Still going is Scotty Thomas. And it was Todd McManus who did very well there to hold his ground. Maybe Scotty Thomas had one 
eye on creating the chance and the other on the penalty there. He thought he'd get something either way, ended up with nothing. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, I mean, hindsight's a beautiful thing, but I mean, surely the option is to get that ball right in front of the goal. And Scotty Thomas had that chance. It hasn't happened so far in this game too often for Sydney Olympic, but that was the perfect opportunity. He'd beaten the two or three men in front of him. All he had to do was make sure the ball was planted in front of Cardozo and it didn't happen again. Shannon looks up, doesn't see a lot on. Goes for the percentage ball, headed away by Durakovic. Now with Mark Wilson. Goes over the top. Wetrick should get there first. Wetrick into the area. The layoff for Ritchie. Owens. He tries his luck well. All the long range shooting from Newcastle is coming from this young man, Greg Owens. So he is prepared to accept responsibility. And there we see again a shot from a long way out. This one going a long way over as well. But encouraging to see him prepared to accept that responsibility when probably a few more senior players around him are dishing it off. Correct. I think Branko Kalina would be love to have Owens in his side. That's exactly what he needs. Guys willing to take a chance if they're a long way out. Well, I can tell you, Wade, the last shot he had that was the half volley a little earlier was certainly heading for the top corner from where I was. And only the deflection kept it out, but it's a good point you make. They're prepared to have a go. They're prepared to get stuck in Newcastle. And nothing will change, you think, as far as they're concerned. Good work there from Brennan to win it back for Olympic. Cardozo, look how deep he is dropping to get possession. Putting himself about as well. Forced the error. Emerton through the middle. Pass McManus. He's strong enough as well. Emerton. Well, that is a trademark run from Brent Emerton. He's like a bowling ball the way he knocks people out of the way. He had the speed to get there on the end of the ball. Look how strong he is as well. Couldn't keep the shot down. Well, I don't know whether it was a fluke, but with Pablo Cardozo going out and taking up that wide roll, it left a huge gap for, for Emerton to run through. And that's his job, really. I mean, Franco Kalina brags about this diamond that he's got in the middle of the midfield and that the point of the diamond is Brett Emerton. It's his role to make sure that he supports uh, Savinsky and Pablo Cardozo. He hasn't really done that through the middle so far this evening, but that was a perfect chance to. Well, I think the, the point about that diamond you mentioned, Paul, is to keep Emerton free, to make him do whatever he likes, basically, and he does that, but it's just unfortunate that it was Cardozo that wasn't in the shooting area there because you feel that he would have done a, a much better job. Good ball by Juric, almost finding Savinsky. Shannon has to scurry back, and Catlin there has just played it out wide. It's been kept in by Emerton. Not the best of clearances from the goalkeeper. Cardozo gets possession. And Pablo Cardozo, well, that was an inviting opportunity for him. A little bit of sloppy work there from Newcastle in their own area. Cardozo, you won't want to give him too many opportunities like that. A minute now played into stoppage time. Newcastle really concentrating on protecting this situation. Olympic would dearly love a goal before the break. Roberts. The idea was to push it wide to Owens. Didn't work out. Here's Milan Blagojevic, now with Bailey. The game being played at the pace that Newcastle had hoped to. See it played in, very slow indeed. Blagojevic. Thomas goes down the line. Cardozo once again has dropped into midfield. One of Oglia hustling Blagojevic into error. Ritchie took too long there, Peter Ritchie. Too many touches because Bonavogli was away down that right side. Shannon, in the meantime, has given away the free kick. Not happy with the decision, the Scotsman Robert Shannon. Franco Cellina there, looking a little more relaxed, but I'm sure he won't be too impressed with the way things have gone in this first half. Olympic having the territory and the possession, but no goals to show for it. And that will be the story of the first half. 
There goes the whistle from Jeremy Blaney. So Newcastle Breakers, who set out to frustrate Sydney Olympic, have done just that. They've got plenty of men behind the ball. Sydney Olympic can't get that free-flowing style going in this first half. The best chance came early to Jason Chalina. Catlin made the save at the other end for Hootsis. Largely unemployed. Newcastle looking to hit Sydney Olympic on the break. A few signs towards the end of the half that the home side were coming back into the match. But the halftime score here at the Birmingham Gardens is the Newcastle Breakers nil. Sydney Olympic nil. Newcastle going into this match on the back of some very good form indeed. Just two losses in their last eight matches. A win here tonight would push them with Marconi Fairfield equal on 24 points. Sydney Olympic for their part looking for a result which would push them as high as fourth in the table going into tomorrow's games. So Newcastle, maybe we will see them be a bit more adventurous in the second half. To please the home crowd, if nothing else, it's a good crowd here at the Breakness Stadium. One of their better crowds of the season. And a sign of support probably for those recent results. Olympic looking to press forward right from the start of the second half. Milan Blagojevic in midfield. We need to see him producing more passes for his front runners. Brennan onto the left boot. Thinks about the shot forced away from the danger zone by Owens. And it comes from Bailey away by Roberts. Not the best of headers though. And Catlin, the goalkeeper, has called for the ball and got it. No change made by Branko Cellina during the break. Somewhat of a surprise. He's keeping his substitutes in reverse for the moment. As Bonavoglia wings the foul for Newcastle just inside the breakers half of the pitch. Newcastle have a striker in Yun Song Chul on the bench and an attacking midfielder in Fayad Umlil. So at least Derry does have some attacking options if he's looking to move in for the kill in the final period of this match. At the moment, happy to persevere with just one of Oglia up front. Misunderstanding there between Owens and one of Oglia. One of Oglia, though, against the odds, has really done a good job in this first half. He has certainly unsettled the Sydney Olympic bench, uh, defence, I should say, Mehmet Durakovic in particular. Yes, indeed. I mean, we talk about Mem's speed, but Buna Voglia, when he takes off, I tell you, there's not too many that are going to catch him, including Mem. I think you might have mentioned that earlier, Michael. But he's, uh, he's so willing to work from one side of the ground to the other. When you've got midfielders uh, who are finding it difficult to pick out strikers, he is a blessing. Emerton on that far side. Gets the ball through the legs to find Juric. Here's Cardozo lining up for Blagojevic on his less favoured left foot for Milan Blagojevic. And it goes well and truly wide of the mark. Well, let's test the mood in that Sydney Olympic camp. Let's go to the sideline with Alan Hunter. Yeah, I'm here with the Olympic assistant coach. And John, certainly a very difficult team to break down. But what are the tactics now that you're you going to use in the second half to do that? We've made a few changes uh, in the second half. Uh, we've put a marker on Bonavoglia. And we're only playing three at the back. We've uh, taken Scotty out wide. And Brett's playing wide on the other side. So we are trying to break them down. Uh, but it, it is difficult. Newcastle's good at this. Uh, they have been very disciplined. They've got some good results. And they're at home. The pitch is not helping us either. Well, certainly you've struggled away from home this year, but possibly Chris Galantis would come on at some stage soon. I'd say we're going to make a change in the next 10 minutes or so. Uh, probably Norman Tame will probably come on uh, before Chris, but we do need width and uh, we need to break them down because the breakers are giving us a lot of problems. And any problems with the injuries to Jurakovic or possibly Savinsky? No, there's uh, Savinsky only. It's only his fitness. Uh, there's no injuries in the camp. Uh, we haven't really had any many problems over the last few weeks. Okay, John, all the best. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks, Alan. There's the words from the assistant coach of Sydney Olympic, John Sentas. He did a good job as caretaker last season, towards the end of last season. Now working beneath Branko Cellina. 
The new full-time regime at Sydney Olympic as of this season. So Sydney Olympic, one of the better paying clubs in the league against one of the poorer clubs, if you like, in Newcastle Breakers. Although Newcastle looking to change things off the park as well with a consortium due to take control of the club sometime in the next couple of weeks. And that consortium looking certainly to strengthen the team. And it comes from Zavinsky. Takes a deflection off Shannon. And Roberts will go up the park here. And just a word on that, Paul Way. We've talked for a long, long time about Newcastle's potential. Big crowds during the days of KB United back in the late 70s, early 80s. Hasn't really happened since. But if someone can get the structure right... This town has a very big future in the National League. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, there's a lot of talk about new consortiums joining the National League, and they need the backing of, for example, premiership sides like Manchester United, Leeds, West Ham. And uh, you're quite right. It's a cosy little stadium. It needs developing. I'm sure everybody in Newcastle would agree with that. But, wow, so much potential. There's nobody for miles other than this soccer team in the National League. And when they're doing well... It's a great little atmosphere to be involved in. Down the line from McManus. Touch came from Wilson. Away by Durakovic, but he's left it short. Here's Owen starting to provide more support for Bonavoglia. Five minutes have been played in this second half. No change to the scoreline. Bonavoglia lays it off to Richie. Looks wide, has Roberts out there. Now with Andy Roberts into the channel is Wetcherek. The layoff came from Owens. The ball through the middle from Price, almost finding Wetcherek. Good defending work there from Durakovic. But they haven't release the pressure too much olympic one of oglia gets the laugh in it comes from wetrick the header there from richie he had to stretch i think he was just trying to flick it on really didn't work out and that will be a sydney olympic throw well sydney olympic looking to force the issue in the second half what is the situation with the breakers we'll go down once again to alan hunter well i'm here with assistant coach david Lowe, and Lowe was there much said at half time by lee sterry and yourself well, there's always plenty said by Lee at half-time, but uh, he's reasonably happy with how things are going. Just wants the uh, concentration to be maintained uh, and just to relax a little bit more when we do get the steals in front of goals. We've had a couple of chances there. Well, they've obviously gone man-to-man -man on Bonavoglia up front, which leaves them a little less at the back, Olympic. So you'll try and look to possibly get someone in there to help, John. Yeah, I mean, we've had Greg Owens get in a couple of times. He's got a terrific shot and can dribble, and uh, that, that's the plan. You know, we try to catch him a little bit on the break. You've got to respect their ability. And... Uh, get Greg in on, the, on some of Johnny's flicks. Okay, so how do you see the result going at this stage, Lowy? Um, well, hopefully it'll be our way. I mean, it's a tight game. I'm probably the first goal is going to uh, break the back of either side, I think. Well, the tactics were good, bringing the pitch in a bit smaller, and the conditions have certainly helped you. I think you've done well today. Yeah, that's not too bad, is it? Uh, I wish they'd have done that for me. I might have played another season or two. <laughs> Thanks, Lowy. Have a good one. Cheers, mate. Always honest, David Lowe. A very well-respected member of the Newcastle soccer community. Had to spend most of his career travelling down the freeway, unfortunately, for David Lowe. Mostly to Marconi Fairfield. Newcastle out of the National League for a long period during the 80s. Came up here to Newcastle Breakers to end his career. Now on the coaching staff. Has a bit of a media profile as well with a column in the local paper, the Newcastle Herald. So he's well known around town, David Lowe. Doing a good job with the youth team as well. Here's Blagojevic. Juric. And so Juric has been in sparkling form for Sydney Olympic in recent weeks. He's an option up front towards the end of the match if that's what Branko Cellina wants. There's his son Jason Cellini going well and truly wide with that shot. Well, it's a very, it's a game of chess really, isn't it? It's a tactical battle between two coaches who are changing their tactics on the run, if you like, to try and turn this game around. Lee Sterry has certainly 
put the onus on Sydney Olympic to chase the result. There's no doubt about that. No, if you want the points, uh, Branko, come and get them. But you're going to have to work hard and break down a 10-man defence because they're still leaving all the men behind the ball. I feel sorry for uh, for Thomas and Emerton, though, because uh, not only are they up against one, they're up against two. On the, on the right-hand side, you've got Wilson and Shannon. On the left-hand side, you've got Wizarek and Roberts, and they're backing each other up beautifully. So it's going to be tough. Here comes Juric, lending a hand. Well, he has caused some problems this season going forward, Big Ante Juric. Not getting his shot on target on that occasion. That is a good outlet for a Sydney Olympic if they want to use it. More signs of life on the sideline. We've seen that picture from about the 10th minute of the game. I'm sure each of those three players will be wondering when they get on. Rather be on the field than going up and down the sideline. Perhaps Norman Tomei will be the first player off the bench. That was the indication from John Sentas. Savinsky tussling with Roberts. Good back heel. Here's Emerton. Pass one, pass to Emerton, and the shot stung the gloves there of Bobby Catlin, who must have seen it late. The goalkeeper not expecting the shot, and in the end almost spilled the ball straight to Pablo Cardozo. Good recovery from the goalkeeper. More encouraging sign that from Emerton. Durakovic, Cardozo. Lagojevic out left is Thomas down the line goes Chalina Thomas goes inside instead and it was Hathorn Thwaite checked off the ball by Cardoza which has won Newcastle the free kick Mike I just wonder if uh, you can see on the replay here that's the uh, the free kick just a little touch I just wonder Mike if uh, Scotty Thomas He's playing in this wide role as Branko Kalina wants, but I just wonder if he's getting all the way to the byline. That's where all the dangerous crosses come in from. He seems to be quite content to cut inside from a midfield position. I'm sure Branko would like to see him hit that byline and get across from deep. Well, Norm Tomei, sorry, Mike, looks like the man that will be coming on. He's just getting final instructions from the coach and putting the shin pads on. But it will be the case of who will come off, obviously, but Olympic have got to do something, Paul, don't they? Oh, Norman Tomei did come off the bench against Marconi last week and made an impact. Probably thought he did enough to get a starting spot tonight, Norman Tomei, but Franco Cellina persevering with Adrian Savinsky, who I'd suggest is the most likely player to come off. Norman Tomei certainly knows how to find the back of the net. 46 goals for him in the Ericsson Cup. And he's going to be looking for number 47 tonight because he's about to come on the field, Norman Tomei, on the next, next break in play. Savinsky's probably got a minute at the most left to try and turn this situation around on a personal level as well as a collective one. And when you're coming back from fitness after a long layoff, it's probably a very hard pitch to play on this one. Takes a lot out of your legs. Here comes Emerton. Chalina has drifted wide to the right this time. Difficult bounce. Brings it under control. Juric looks up. The cross drops behind the two players in the middle. It might now find its way to Thomas. And Scotty Thomas there saying there was a deflection referee. But Jeremy Blaney disagrees. Well, you got it right there, Mike Cockrell. It is Savinsky that will be coming off. I don't think that's the shock, but the real question is, can they start to penetrate? Because, Paul, they've really only looked to try and have those long-distance strikes in this second half, and Norm Tomei will be the guy to come, come on. And I think they've really got to try and create something wide again and get the ball in behind there. Because Bobby Catlin and certainly Lee Sterry is indicating to his defence that there's no real problem, guys, with those. Let them fire out from there all day. There he is, Norman Tomei. He's got about half an hour to stake a claim for a starting spot next week. Good enough to do it. Sydney Olympics certainly looking for inspiration. Newcastle maintaining their shape. Sydney Olympic with the territory, but not a lot to show for it. Up the park from McManus. 
One of Oglier against Durakovic to bounce favours Sydney Olympic now with Blagojevic. Newcastle very square across the back. Tomei, second touch is a good one. Looking for Cardozo, but once again, blue shirt swarming all over Pablo Cardozo. He hasn't had a moment to rest on the ball this evening. As you would expect, the top goal scorer this season. 16 goals so far for Pablo Cardozo. Four times as many as Newcastle's top goal scorer, Johnny Bonavoglia. In fact, Newcastle have, have collectively have scored just one more goal than Cardozo's managed on his own. So it's no wonder that he is a marked man. Here comes Bonavoglia. Can't get past Bailey. Gets the foot in. Scotty Bailey. And I've got to say, Paul, he's a very well-marked man tonight. They've done an extremely good job on all the strikers, particularly Cardozo. He's really only been limited to one or two half chances. Haythorn Thwait. Price. Not the best of clearances from Durakovic. Remember Durakovic. The sweep up for Sydney Olympic has... Bailey and Urich in front of him. Richie, good work there by Richie to spread the play. Now with Roberts. He comes inside though. And Richie there. Getting into trouble. Gets out of it. Onside and in space is Wetcherek. One of Ogley goes near post. That's the target. A chance here for Owens. He's done it. Greg Owens has done it once again. Well, well, well boy makes a specialty of goals like that it dropped perfectly for him he's been threatening that all night Greg Owens and didn't he make Olympic pay superb finish here from a young player who knows where the back of the net is no chance for Bahutas Newcastle take the lead well, Wadey, Blind Freddy wouldn't be surprised with that. Look at that strike by Owens. That's an absolute gem, and he's been threatening, as Mike said, all night. And now it's really a test for Olympic. They've got to really do something now from the bench. And talking about the bench, Adrian Savinsky's just to my right here. He's come off, obviously, but he's nursing a bit of a knock. He's got ice on his left ankle, the inside of his left ankle. Just what the doctor ordered for Lee Sterry, who whose team has absorbed this pressure and now they take the lead the breakers 60 minutes gone one nil to the home side and sydney olympic now really have to make things happen at least terry about to make another change as the header comes downwards from bailey almost finding its way through to tomei a lot been said before this match about olympics form away from home it does indeed make sorry reading this is now a real, real test of character, Paul White. Yeah, it is a test of character, but uh, I don't think I'd be too concerned yet if you're a Sydney Olympic supporter, because uh, the last 15 minutes is when Sydney Olympics seem to do all their damage. They have got great skills when it comes to keeping possession, even though maybe tonight might not have been one of their better nights. But keeping possession means the opposition have to work twice as hard to get it back. That's when they get tired, that's when Olympics strike. So we expect the last 15 minutes of this game to be all up at one end. Well, they're Dick looking, sorry, Mike, they're looking to shore up that defence, aren't they, with Adam Sanderson, the number four, coming on for Newcastle Breakers. Hayton Thwait is the player to go off. Sanderson will slot into this right side of the park. Adam Sanderson, who had a season out of the Ericsson Cup last season, wasn't wanted by the former coach, John Cosmina. Invited back into the squad by Lee Sterry this season. And has made a number of appearances off the bench. He goes into the middle of the park, in fact, Sanderson. As Newcastle look to add a second here. Owens tries the shot, can't get it on target this time. Greg Owens, but he's making a name for himself. He scored once from similar distance. That was a good opportunity again. Came inside his man. Couldn't force the save out of the goalkeeper. And just on Hay Thornthwaite, I've just been told by the bench that he was suffering a little from that virus that he had during the week and couldn't continue because of those purposes, really. But hopefully Sanderson will put a fresh view in that defence because they'll 
probably need it, Wadey. Emerton. Sanderson across there. Throw will go to Olympic. And Kalantis now getting ready for action. So Franco Cellina showing a few more of his cards, as you would expect, given the circumstances. Blagojevic. And Sanderson did just enough to put him off there. Newcastle looked to break through Buonavoglia. Sanderson keeps going down that left channel. Buonavoglia is dispossessed by Bailey. Owens is down behind play with what looks to be a cramp. Here come Olympic once again. Anto Juric now virtually camped in midfield for Olympic. Here he is on the ball once again. Cardozo. That'll be a free kick to the breakers. I'm not sure what for, but... And the sub's about ball. to be made, Mike. It's Milan Blagojevic coming off for Sydney Olympic. And it's that action man with that deadly left foot, Chris Galantis, who finally makes his way on the field for Sydney Olympic. And they'll certainly be looking to him, Wadey, to get a real injection and get past some players and do what he does best. Take people on and have a strike. Yes, Chris Galantis is just the man for the occasion. But Greg Owens, in the meantime, is still down because he's got a problem perhaps with cramp, although I did see him react after that shot a few minutes ago. So Owens will need some treatment here. Disappointing for Newcastle if he has to go off. That wouldn't be part of the plan of Lee Sterry, but he's done his job so far, Greg Owens. He is the player who has broken the deadlock. Good timing as well. 15 minutes into the second half. His third goal in the Ericsson Cup, and they've all come from about the same range. This is the problem. As he checked there, came inside, stumbled. And Greg Owens, maybe with a bit of cramp. But he wants to get back on the park in a hurry. Brennan now for Olympic. Sense of urgency will now creep into this Olympic team. Kalantis, they need him involved right from the start. Tolina trying to get past Robbie Shannon. Can't do so. Owens now back out on the park for the breakers. And just confirming Mike Cockle that it is cramp. Physiotherapist and coach Lee Sterry have just confirmed that it is cramp that he's suffering from. But as most Newcastle players would do, he's continued to carry on. Owens against Urich. Urich gets the header. Thomas jumping well. Over the top by Wilson, away by Bailey. Sanderson with the touch. Here comes Richie. Well, a win here for Newcastle would certainly give them an outside hope of pushing on towards the finals. And Newcastle will have never made the finals in the history of the Ericsson Cup in their many forms, either as KB or Rosebuds or Australs. So you can imagine the sort of reaction they get in this town if they can push on in the last few rounds of the season and actually challenge for a top six place. Yeah, there's... Uh, there's Cans of red paint certainly will be painting the town red, that's for sure. Brennan, away by McManus. In comes a shot from Kalantis. That's the right idea from the substitute. Lee Sterry knows all about the threat provided by Chris Kalantis. And he does look the most likely, Paul, doesn't he, with that left foot, Chris Kalantis. In by Wilson. How quickly was Bonavoglia in there as well? And away eventually by Durakovic. Good ball there from Mark Wilson. Bonavoglia almost getting on the end of it. 
Well, a second goal would certainly kill off the Sydney Olympic team, you would think, but Bahutis was off his line quickly there. Good work by the goalkeeper. Brett Emerton on to the byline, gets the corner. A few anxious signs on that Newcastle bench. They know how important this victory would be. Well, the signs are going to be changed now, and it'll be Freddie Umlil that'll come on. And Greg Owens, I suggest, will be the player that will come off after succumbing to that cramp. And by the way, he's limping there. You may suggest, Wadey, that it could be a little bit more than cramp. We'll wait later and find out. So, Fyled Umlil gets his chances. Greg Owens gets the applause of the crowd here at the Breakers Stadium. Another sweet strike from him. That's the difference between the two teams at this point. Greg Owens, a local hero, fast making a reputation for himself. The corner goes to Olympic. And it comes from Brennan, touched on by Kalantis. Might break for Thomas. He gets the touch. Durakovic. Past one, Mehmet Durakovic. Hasn't been cleared. Acrobatics from Juric and high feet as well, says the referee. So that will be a free kick to Newcastle. Andy Roberts taking a knock to the head there. As we see Ante Juric stretch out those long legs of his. Andy Roberts, one of many unsung heroes for this Newcastle side. Okay, Chalina. Getting more and more frustrated the longer this game wears on. Well, yeah. I think the frustration, sorry, wait, it's turned to anger now. He's just telling more players to push up, as they're told. I think they've got to push up as well. Eh? You've got to take a chance, but at the same time, you've just got to keep your shape a little bit. The last thing you need is seven attackers up front because all you need is to get caught one more time and the game's gone. So they've got to be sensible about it. But now is the time when they've got to push up. Now they've got to get bodies in the box. Juric with the ball across field that eludes everyone and will go out for a throw-in. Well, you've suggested it all day, Wadey, haven't you? And I agree, they've just got to get numbers in the box. When it was nil all, they weren't doing it enough, I felt. And certainly now they've got to try and get numbers in the box if they're looking to stay on track after a good performance last week. Shannon snapping away there at the heels of Kalantis. Sense of urgency now starting to creep into this Olympic team. Pushing the passes, everyone's looking a little more lively. They know the importance of the situation. They can't afford a loss here, Olympic. Newcastle are like doing the job. Umlil. Wetcherek. He had an important hand in that goal from Owens, Brad Wetcherek. Price. Took an eternity to clear it. And Kalantis appeals for the throw and gets it. The ball did cross the line. I'll tell you what, they're growing with confidence, Newcastle, aren't they, Wadey? They're settling well. The shape, as you mentioned, that Olympic don't seem to have is certainly very prevalent in the Newcastle team. They're well disciplined. And on that occasion, very cool, I thought, under pressure. Chalina. Juric, so Olympic now just leaving Bailey and Durakovic at the back. Everyone now pushing forward. Try and get the equaliser. Bailey into the feet of Tomei, good touch from him. Tries to thread it through to Emerton. Umlil gets in front of Juric, goes over the top. Durakovic to Brennan. Thomas looking for Kalantis. Shannon is there first and Mark Wilson and his opposite number Chalina tangle on the edge of the area the decision goes the way of the Sydney Olympic player interesting opportunity this for Sydney Olympic haven't had too many chances from the set pieces tonight but this is certainly a good opportunity well, I didn't think there was a lot in that, Wadey. A little bit fortunate to get a free kick there, I think, Olympic. Yeah, you make your own luck, Alan, though, don't you? I mean, <clears throat> initially it was the uh, Thomas ball over the top to Kalantis, 
that actually turned the Newcastle defence round and they've, uh, they've deserved this free kick for trying something. Cardozo has a good look at this one. Pablo Cardozo, once again, Jeremy Blaney, the referee, doesn't seem to have got the wall back the required distance. Cardozo will try and bend it over the wall. He does so, and Catlin did ever so well there to stretch and make a save. Good positioning by the goalkeeper and a good save in the end, but credit as well to Cardozo. Look at the swerve on that shot. He knew exactly what he was doing there, Cardozo. Olympic with a corner. It drops deep. Emerton with a header just wide of the post from Emerton. So a few signs of life now from Sydney Olympic, as you would expect. A couple of good opportunities. First one falling to Cardozo from the free kick. Well, Here not is only again. is that a good save by Catlin, but he's kept it away from the three Olympic players that we haven't seen to date, Wadey, chasing in for the rebound. So the hunger's obviously still there for the Travellers. The Lance is over the top. Headed away by Roberts. They've gotten each other's way there, though, Sydney Olympic. Shannon looks up. Once again, only Bonavoglia is at the sharp end for Newcastle. Urich. Jason Chalina. Well, he has good doubt of this match, hasn't he? Yeah, he's he's frustrated as well. I mean, he's not got too many options. I mean, that's not like Jason Kalina to just try and lump a ball into the 18-yard box like he did on that occasion. He likes to play a little bit of football on the floor, and he's frustrated. Well, Bonavogli is on to it in a flash. Bailey has to retreat. Needs support. Gets it from Sanderson. Wittrick wants it played down the left. Sanderson comes inside instead. And Sanderson forces the save out of George Mahutza. So good counter-attacking play there from Newcastle. And one of Oglia once again hustling this Olympic defence into error. What a game he's having. Well, that's a great strike there from Sanderson. It set up nicely for him that time. And just as good a save from Mahutza. The game's got a lot to go yet. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, when you, you look across the park, you see Lee Sterry, the first thing he did when the shot was saved was signal everybody to get back behind the almost the halfway line because he knows this game could slip away in the matter of five minutes as we know with uh, the better teams in this competition. Catlin up the park with the back pass. Brennan against Wilson. Bonavoglia again buzzing around this Sydney Olympic defence. Bailey finds Kalantas. Good control. And Kalantz is checked on the way through by McManus, although the Newcastle defender clearly disagrees with that decision. But the flow of free kicks starting to go Olympics way, and that is a good sign of the pattern of the match. Olympics certainly stepping up a gear. Yeah, they have, but they're playing balls into dangerous areas behind that last defender of Newcastle, and they're getting the benefits now. Kalantz looking to whip it in. Goes deep. Stretching was Scotty Bailey, but couldn't keep the header down. Difficult chance that for Bailey. Did well, really, to get contact on the ball. He was already up when the ball eventually came to him. Well, it was delivered and created by Kalantis, wasn't it? Along with Krizmir Marisic, he's probably one of the best players at getting free kicks. Whether they're dive or whether they're a free kick, weighty, as you said, they are starting to create things out that flank. And it's only the right-hand side they're creating it to. They need an outlet, sorry, the, the left-hand side. They need an outlet down the right. Cardozo. Kalantis. Juric is calling it for it in the middle. Durakovic. Emerton. Not the best of touches from him. And the ball will break here for Ritchie. Bonavoglia is the opportunity and the outlet. And here he is, Bonavoglia, prepared to take on Brennan. Still going, Bonavoglia. Pass one, rides the challenge. Well, how can one man cause so much uncertainty among four others? Bonavoglia really is starting to come into this game. 
Well, he's been there from the start, but in the last 10 minutes or so, he's been a fantastic outlet for the breakers. Well, you wonder if he's an only child, Buonaboglia, because he's done so much work on his own and doesn't stop. And certainly, at times, it seems like eternity that he's got to wait for support. It's certainly a dangerous tactic and a very good performance by him tonight. Selena inside. Thomas has moved forward as well for Olympic. And Umlu will allow that to go over the goal line. So Olympic pushing bodies forward now. Juric, Cardozo, Tomei, Chalina and Emerton. They seem to be in a line across the edge of that Newcastle area. It's all or nothing as far as Branko Chalina is concerned. Lee Sterry has probably got Olympic right where he wants them. Yeah, indeed. And you see, this game didn't start an hour and a half ago, or almost an hour and a half ago. It started about five days ago. Lee Sterry's put a lot of time and effort into these boys. So when they've hit the ground, before they've even got stripped, they know exactly what they're going to do. Galantis, the touch came off. Robbie Shannon, that will be a corner to Olympic. Galantis doing well, running at that breaker's defence. Well, he's so dangerous when he takes players on, as we suggested. And certainly looks to create something every time he gets the ball. Tomei with the corner, goes near post. Peels the handball, not given. Blaney wouldn't have seen that, the referee. Certainly unsighted. Brennan. Sydney Olympic now with just... On 10 minutes remaining. Thomas. Mill gets in the way. The layer from Urich. Bailey with the shot. And McManus allowed it to go through to the keeper. Brennan seemed to catch Wilson late. The referee waves play on. Umlil. Wittrick goes outside of him. Wittrick again with the ball into the middle. Bonavoglia dives in, caught Durakovic from behind. Johnny Bonavoglia. Well, Brad Wetterick had a hand in that opening goal, and again, he's done well there to get down that line, showing good stamina, Wetterick, on a heavy pitch. Confirmation, 10 minutes left, 1-0 to the breakers. In the Olympic, desperate for the equaliser. Galantis. Durakovic. Emerton. Emerton forced wide. Gets a good cross in as well. And Wilson is able to shepherd the ball away for a goal kick. Fred Emerton, the captain of the Olly Roos. Pushing further and further towards that right side. Many would say that is his best position. Has been played through the middle by Olympic for a lot of this season. Well, Coach Branko Chalina wasn't very happy with that cross, Mike, I can tell you. He's certainly starting to get frustrated and a little bit angry on the bench here. Cardozo. Durakovic. In it comes from Durakovic, the header from Juric, and he's done it. Ante Juric once again has bobbed up with a very important goal for his team. And there's a card against Cutland as well for something that happened after the goal was scored. Not a lot of fuss shown by Ante Juric, not a lot of emotion, but he's done the job. And Juric getting on the end of the cross, the mistake really made by McManus. Good finish, though, that one. It was a very good finish, but look at the ball that went in there. Jurakovic beat the last defender with one pass. In fact, he cut out five defenders with one pass. They've been doing it down this left-hand side. And there's the man who's been willing to sacrifice his position at the back and get himself into a wide midfield role. He would attack down the right-hand side in the per first part of this second half. He's got himself down the left-hand side that time. He's been crucial to Olympics last half an hour. And just confirming that yellow card was for Bob Catlin, as you said, Mike. And it was for deliberately interfering with the goal scorer, if you like. He had a bit of a go at Juric after he put that one past him. There is the incident, in fact. Juric trying to get away to get 
the game underway and Bobby Catlin had other ideas. But Ante Juric responding well to the challenge as have indeed Sydney Olympic now. A reward probably Paul Wade for their efforts not just in the last few minutes but over the course of the game. They really have put a lot of pressure on this Newcastle defence and eventually it cracked. Yeah, they've had the lion's share of possession, haven't they? Uh, they'll be disappointed with their final third, but in the last 10, 15 minutes when they did start to get Colansis down this left-hand side with quality balls, you almost felt that uh, maybe the tide was turning a little bit. Still, not quite sure what, how long to go, but that last 15 minutes, again, is crucial to Olympics uh, striping for the top. Wilson. And I can tell you on the sideline, the Olympic team were just preparing to bring on... Elias Ogarinos, and then all of a sudden, bang, they've equalised. Not the best of headers there from Price. It might break for Cardozo. Danger here for Newcastle. Cardozo looking for Juric. And the touch from Juric this time, not the best one. Thomas has been dispossessed by Richie Bonavoglia. And Thomas again across there. That will be a Sydney Olympic throw. Well, the referee has reversed the decision of his assistant. Well, I've got to say, guys, he got it wrong there because I'm right here on the sideline and everyone, including myself, saw what you saw, Mike. That was certainly a wrong decision there, favouring the home side. But the home supporters are very happy about it. Well, we're set up here for a good finish at the Breakers Stadium. One apiece now. Sydney Olympic showing good character to come back from that deficit. And this game could go either way. Um Lil is in the middle for Newcastle. Away by Juric. Richie against Chalina. And in the end, the decision goes to Sydney Olympic after a fairly lengthy pause from the referee. Galantis. Juric. Again, is playing through the middle up front. Galantis goes over the top looking for Tomei. Great delivery. Tomei's got goal side and just can't find the target. Superb ball there from Chris Galantis. Good use of the body as well from Norman Tomei, who got behind his man by just holding his ground. And for a player of his calibre, he really should have got that on target. That's an awful finish, Michael. He will not be happy about that. But then again, I guess when you come off the bench, he's not been on all that long, but uh, still, he's warmed up enough to take chances like that. That's what Sydney Olympic need. They need those chances buried. It's where the best teams in the country become the best teams because they have got that quality player. Galantis goes down under the challenge of Sanderson. Here's Emerton. Olympic. Not happy just with one point. They want three. Newcastle. Probably content with the draw. Catlin with the throw, really put his own player under pressure, but Wilson did very well indeed. Well, it has been a tactical battle right from the start, this. We've praised Lee Sterry for his approach, but you also have to give credit to Branko Cellina, the way that he rearranged things once they went behind. Juric certainly being pushed forward has been an important move. He was prepared to just play two at the back, Franco Cellina, to chase the result, and he got a reward. Yeah, he made uh, the appropriate substitutions at the right time. A little bit of confidence was gained by all when Chris Galanza started to win free kicks down this left-hand side. But I just wonder now, can Newcastle breakers change their mindset? As you can imagine, for, what is it, 70 minutes now, they've been thinking, let's not concede a goal, let's go out there and not lose it. I wonder what they're going to do now. Do they have the discipline to continue that? Or will they just start to be thinking, well, we've been in this game, let's have a go at it. Try and get three points. Wetcherek. Out wide is Roberts. 
One of Oglia, a looping header from the smallest man on the pitch. Really no threat to the Olympic goal. A couple of minutes left now, plus stoppages here. Newcastle have given a good account of themselves in the Olympic. Probably the favoured team going into the match, but they had to work hard for a result. Thomas, Chalina. Urich. Homey goes through the middle. Cardozo as well. Cardozo turning one way and the other. Umlil forces him wide. Urich, they can get a good cross in here. There's trouble, but Urich really didn't get the contact on the ball that he wanted. Thomas. Playing against his old club, Scotty Thomas, giving it away, but might have won it back. Roberts is equally determined. Sanderson it was, in fact. Here's Wetcherek. Roberts. Clearance coming off Brett Emerton for a Newcastle throw. Elias Orgerinos will get just a few minutes of action as we go into stoppages. At the end of this match, Audrinos did come off the bench last week and score a goal. So maybe Franco Chilina thinking the same thing can happen again. Here is Chilina, Juric, Sanderson, Cardozo getting in front, gets the free kick. That's the right decision from the referee. Lee Sterry clearly disagrees. Olympic want to make the change. And they want to make the change before the free kick is taken. The players haven't seen the, or the referee in fact, haven't seen the card up. As Kalantis fires one straight at the goal. And Catlin puts it over the crossbar. See what he's livid about. There was only three in the wall. I mean, that distance, you really need five in a wall. You need a bit of protection for a goalkeeper. And that's exactly what Bobby was saying to his defence. When I say five, I want five. And just confirming that change, as Lee Sterry looks to make one himself, Olympic did make the change, as suggested, Mike. Augurinos came on the field and Mark Brennan went off. And now it's Lee Sterry's turn. Yun Song Chul, the striker from Korea, will replace Mark Wilson. The corner is with Olympic. We're a minute or so into stoppages. Tomei pumps it into the middle. Orgerinos is there, but Catlin is to the ball first. And one of Oglia now on the run. Yun. Is picked out by a superb ball from Bonavoglia. You know, isolated on this near touch line. The ball sticks for him. Olympic have it back, but they've handed it straight back to Newcastle. Sanderson does well. Diving in was Durakovic. Good timing in the challenge. Kalantis. Umlil was in there first. Down he goes. Juric was very late indeed, Ante Juric. And Juric gets the card. I don't think Ante Juric is angry so much at the referee. Well, well probably a little bit at himself and his fellow defenders. Yeah, sorry, Mike, I can tell you. Branko Cholina, the coach, is very, very angry with Chris Kalantis because he gave up some cheap possession there, which meant Juric had to basically bring him down there and get a yellow card that he would normally not have done. Wetcherek. Away by Juric. Sanderson stretching well. And there is the full-time whistle. So it's going to end all square, square here at the Breakers Stadium. No score in the first half. It looked to be heading towards a scoreless stalemate before Greg Owens, the youngster, found some space on the edge of the area. A sweet volley from Owens, his third of the season. Put Newcastle in front, but Sydney Olympic responded well to the challenge. Branko Cholina, their coach, 
made a few key tactical adjustments. He pushed players forward. One of them was Ante Juric. And the big defender bobbed up nine minutes from full time to get on the end of a good cross from Mehmet Durakovic to head Olympic back into the game. They couldn't find the winner, the visitors. But honours are even in the game between two very competitive sides. Sydney Olympic will probably be satisfied with the result, as will Newcastle. The full-time score here at the Breakers Stadium is Newcastle Breakers 1, Sydney Olympic 1.